Hi there, it's Alina from Exumate Mastery here, and today I want to talk about how you create fireplaces, how you remove the square footage of flooring, uh, where a staircase needs to go up through, and a couple other really cool things that you can do with a tool in Xactimate. So this is a question from one of the people that follow this channel, and I've been meaning to address it. I think several people have actually asked about this. So I'm going to show how to create these areas of the home in Sketch in Xactimate in this video. So here I am, I'm already in an estimate, and I am in X1. So if you're using version 28 online or desktop, just remove this blue ribbon over here and everything is pretty much going to be the same. So here in the sketch, we're gonna talk about the reference areas and the reference blocks located right up here on your toolbar for the sketch. So with the areas, let's say that I have a tile entry here. I can just left click, hold and drag. And what I do is I, I want this to be in the corner. I actually want this area to set here. But what Sketch does to me, and I think it might be because of the door, the way it's swinging or something like that, inhibits me from putting it right in the corner. So what I've gotten used to doing with my reference areas and blocks is kind of creating just a general area or block in the room. And then what I'll do is I'll drag it using that, that um, diamond, excuse me, right there, that diamond just drag it right into the corner and then it seems to act correctly. If I have the area loaded to my cursor and I try to put it in the corner, it seems to like to resist for whatever reason. And I've just, you know, like to save time. So I'm not gonna fight the program. I just found a way to work around it. So let's make this uh, four foot even and four foot four, let's make it four foot six. And this is going to be a tile entry. So what I can do is actually here in Sketch, I can go up to options and go to where it says full screen there and I can click that and it'll, that'll toggle it off and I could go search for the floor covering tile average there that is right there load it to my cursor and I can place it just on the area sorry I'm kind of wandered off screen here let's try that again floor covering tile average and there you go we can just drop it right there just on that area and so it calculated it to be 18 square feet and that's an awesome thing Another thing I can do is add a room on top of this room and use this area to create a hole to go so you could walk up through the room up the staircase. So let me show you what this looks like. So I already have a level created here. I'm just gonna drop a room over the existing room using those outlines. I can just left click, hold and drag, use that as a guide. Then I can use this reference area to go ahead and left click, hold and drag an area above that staircase. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time dialing it in, but I just want you to see how this works. Nine foot six, let's say, and uh, four foot. And then what we're gonna do is in the properties of that area, make sure it's, there we go, make sure it's snug in that corner. We're going to go ahead and go to the flooring hole. This is interesting. So behavior um, the areas have behavior everything if you've ever watched any of my sketch videos i always tell you everything's in the properties so if you want to remove the the square footage behind this and underneath it and actually cut a hole here's what's going to happen so let's look at this in 3d first it's just a patch if you look at all levels you can see there is a you know the staircase is trying to cut a hole there i have some issues maybe with my staircase and then you've got that lovely wall coming up but where it's green is the hole that i i have for my staircase to come up through that uh, floor because right now as you can see it's it's not going to you're not going to come up through anything it's just a a, you can't go anywhere. It's a staircase to nowhere. So what we're going to do with that area is we're actually going to take it and t we're going to tell it whole yes. So a hole is different than if I had said remove carpet and vinyl. These are two different settings. This one just removes anything that rolls out as a sheet good. Anything that's a sheet good, it will remove. So if it's not in a sheet, I don't believe it removes it. You can actually call me out on that, but I believe it has to be in a sheet of a roll of carpet or vinyl sheet good in order to remove it. The hole will actually cut a hole in the floor. See now my green has disappeared. And if we look at this in 3D and look at all levels, you can see that that staircase can now come up through the floor there. You can see through that area and I've actually removed 
everything below it. So that is what the difference is. So pay attention to your behaviors and pay attention to your settings here in the properties so you know what each one does. So that's pretty much it for areas. They, you know, we can attach line items to them. You can go into um, the elevation view and actually use your areas. If you wanted to put, you know, stucco or brick maybe on the exterior of the home, you could do that here, uh, just depending on what your application is and what you wanted to do with that area. So an area is a 2D coating on something or a 2D a hole that's gonna remove something um, underneath it. That is what you wanna use the area for. Now let's talk reference blocks. So I'm gonna go back to tools up here and I'm gonna grab my block and I'm gonna left click, hold and drag here. I'm gonna create some base cabinets in the kitchen. So again, I draw it out here and I just kind of approximate what I want. You can resize it out here if you want to as well. I'm going to create it out here and then just push it into the corner. And then you can actually break your reference blocks so and reference areas, come to think of it. So at uh, two foot here, I could left click once to set the break and I could go ahead and pull out another section of cabinet, just like that. So look at that in 3D and you've got your, your cabinets there. Let's create some upper cabinets. So what I can do is I can draw my block out here, make it one foot six, let's say three foot six length, go to the properties. And I can tell the distance from floor. So let's say we want it to be five foot above the um, where the floor is not above the other counter or the other you know existing lower cabinets we're going with the relation to floor level and it will be above and I can go ahead and just drag that guy up and over here take a look at that in 3d and now you've got some upper cabinets as well and I could probably raise them up a little bit have some room there um, also you can tell here in the properties you could remove the, the linear foot behind the ceiling above if these were snug up up above to the ceiling and they didn't want to detach them I was going to paint around them for some whatever reason um, also notice you've got the removed for carpet and vinyl there and you've also got the removed square footage below and underneath to my knowledge you cannot create a hole like we could with an area this will just remove the square footage underneath so we'll be cutting a hole through like like we did on the area with the level two here as you can see the other thing we can do with those reference blocks is create a chimney which is fun or a fireplace and i can just create one here as long as you're not going to put it in a corner you can usually create it up against a wall no problem let's pull this in a bit let's say it's one foot six for the chimney how tall is our chimney let's say it's it's uh, four foot tall and then let's say we have a excuse me that's going to be our fireplace so i'm going to name that fireplace and then you can see we can then create a chimney on top if i want to we have a different size chimney that's going to go over the top of it and let's say that this chimney starts at four foot because that's where our fireplace ended right i'm going to call this a chimney and i can pull that right above and center it like that. And then what we can do here is make the um, height of the chimney go however high we want, all the way through to the roof. So I could go ahead and move that, or you'll see it go all the way up through the existing levels. And if I put a roof on top there, it would stick out through the roof. So let's take, see if I can see in my home. There you go, that's gonna be your fireplace with the chimney style and then the chase runs up through that second story and then up through the roof if we wanted to and then of course we could remove the linear foot the behind the square foot behind what have you that's what the areas and the reference blocks are good for is removing things behind they look fun and everything but at the end of the day if you're not going to be removing any square footage you know don't waste your time creating these things yeah, it's really up to you of course but in my experience you know this unless you're removing some square footage there's not really a reason to unless maybe your supervisor asks you to one more fun thing you can do with the blocks is you can change the material color so i could make this a nice brick red and i could apply a texture here and we could look at brick and um, lots of different kinds of brick that we could um, let me see here i may not change the color though i might just put a brick coloring on let's take a look and see what happens so in 3d we could take a look at that fireplace 
and there you go. Uh, lastly, you can use your reference areas also on a roof to remove area for skylight. If you're looking to account for the holes cut for the skylight, you can do that as well with the reference area. That's something I've seen people do or use a reference block to show where the chimney comes up through the roof. You can do that as well. So just some other ideas I wanted to throw out there that you can do with the reference areas and the reference blocks. If you found this topic useful, please press that like button below and be sure to comment with any questions you may have or any other uses that you use the reference areas and blocks. My name is Alina Wilson with Xtimate Mastery. I teach contractors how to use Xactimate. For more information on what I do, you can go to my website at xtimatemastery.com. Hope you guys have a great week in your business and I'll see you next week.